What's my motivation? Science communication, that's what it is. Okay. <clears throat> Greetings, sky watchers, and welcome to the sky above us. I'm James Albury, and I'm your tour guide to the night sky. Autumn is quickly approaching for us in the northern hemisphere, but we have another season that happens again this month. It's an eclipse season. What am I talking about? Let me show you. On the evening of September 7th and the morning of September 8th, there will be a total lunar eclipse visible from Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, the Indian Ocean, the Arctic, and Antarctica. Then, two weeks later, just before the autumnal equinox, we have a partial solar eclipse visible exclusively by New Zealand and a small portion of Antarctica. So, let's first talk about what causes eclipses. Both Earth and the Moon cast two shadows, a darker inner shadow called the umbra and a lighter outer shadow called the penumbra. For lunar eclipses, the location of the Moon with respect to Earth's shadow will determine the type of eclipse we can see. If the Moon only passes through the penumbra, we will see a penumbral lunar eclipse. During a penumbral lunar eclipse, there's only a slight dimming of the Moon, which is just barely noticeable to the casual Moon watcher. When the moon passes through only a portion of the darker part of the shadow, the umbra, we call it a partial lunar eclipse. When the moon passes completely into the darker part of Earth's shadow, we have what we call a total lunar eclipse. Two weeks before or after a lunar eclipse, you can experience a solar eclipse. Since the moon is much smaller than Earth, it casts a much smaller shadow. So, to experience an eclipse, you have to be in the right place at the right time to be under the moon's shadow. Because of the moon's position near the end of September, only part of the moon will obscure the sun. So, we call this a partial solar eclipse. Furthermore, since the moon's orbit carries it toward the southern part of the sky, only New Zealanders will get to see this eclipse. Here's how both eclipses will play out. Remember, you will need to adjust the timings for your specific time zone. So, if you're living anywhere from Western Europe to Eastern Asia, you will get to experience this total lunar eclipse on the evening of September 7th or the morning of September 8th, depending on where you live. If you live too far east or too far west, you'll only get to see the beginning or the end of the eclipse. But if you live in China, India, most of Russia, Western Australia, or extreme Eastern Africa and Saudi Arabia, you get to see the entire eclipse. As far as the September 21st partial solar eclipse, this will be a sunrise eclipse. It will begin while most New Zealanders are sleeping, but if you wake up to watch the equinox sunrise, you'll see the sun and moon rising simultaneously in an eclipsed orientation. It will be one of the most beautiful sunrises you'll experience. Remember though, do not look directly at the sun. Either use approved eye protection, a solar filtered telescope with a filter on the front of the telescope, or the pinhole camera method to observe this eclipse. And the further south you live in New Zealand, the more obscured the sun will appear. Auckland will get approximately 61% obscurity. Meanwhile, Invercargill will get almost 73% obscurity. All right, my friends, head outside on either the evening of September 7th and the morning of September 8th to observe the total lunar eclipse, or at sunrise on September 21st to experience the partial solar eclipse. Now remember, where you live is very important for this series of eclipses. Before you go, visit our website, theskyaboveus.org. From there, you can watch previous episodes, listen to the Sky Above Us podcast, get the Sky Above Us merchandise, and you can even ask me an astronomical question that I'll answer in a future episode. Eclipses are always fun to experience, especially when you remember to keep looking up.